Hello, hello, my fellow sovereigns, and welcome back to the Crown Yourself podcast. I am so honored to be here with you today because this week we are diving into all things mental health, physiological health, because a part of claiming your sovereignty is claiming your own power within your physical body. We are all blessed with these, um, what some of my mentors call a meat sack, a soul in a meat sack. And we have an intricate layer of feedback from our body to our brains and vice versa that is this beautiful dance that I have done the dance for years since I healed myself from 10 years of bulimia. And in that experience of that process, I realized how intertwined mental health is with physiological health. That's why I couldn't have thought of a better guest to bring to you than Dr. Isabel Hunsinger. Dr. Isabel Hunsinger is a classically trained doctor. So yes, she went to medical school. She was trained in allopathic medicine and all the sort of prescriptive medical practices that we know in hospitals and with our doctors here in the U.S. today um, and basically all around the West. And she is also a functional medicine doctor. And her story is super powerful as far as her own experience with her own mental health and what she discovered along the way as far as taking care of her physiological health from an integrative functional medicine perspective. She is the host with her amazing husband of the MD and Chef Team show. Her husband is an expert chef and they combine a beautiful mishmash of the healthy eating from her chef husband and the actual somatic physiological mental health practices for an integrative medical enmeshing for this beautiful dance between mental and physical health, which I hope for you that you are able to listen to this podcast and you glean some beautiful insight into some possibilities for your own empowerment of your health, for the empowerment of your health. Now, I also want to put on a trigger warning on this podcast that in this podcast, we will be discussing the concept of suicide and the actual experience of that from Dr. Isabel's perspective. And that I know is a challenging topic. And for me, one of the things that I love about Dr. Isabel is that she brings such honesty and authenticity to the experience of what just a few simple shifts in her practices led her down a path that was very, very challenging and that really, truly, deeply impacted her mental health and the transformation that happened because of that, the transformation into becoming a functional medicine doctor, into finding new solutions and finding an integrative approach to her own health. And with that, I give you Dr. Isabel Hunsinger. While we make every effort to bring you the best and correct information, we are all still learning, and I am simply presenting my views. I am not a licensed medical professional, and even for my guests who are licensed medical professionals, this podcast is purely for general informational, educational, and entertainment purposes. The use of any of this information on this podcast or materials linked in this podcast is at your own risk and you take full ownership of your results. This podcast is not intended as a substitute for professional medical treatment and or diagnosis. Always consult with a doctor for any medical issues you may be having. Welcome to the Crown Yourself Podcast, where together we build your empire and transform your subconscious stories about what's possible for your business, body, and life. I'm your host, Kimberly Spencer, founder of crownyourself.com, and I'm a master mindset coach, best-selling author, TEDx speaker, known to my clients as a game changer. Each week, you get the conscious leadership strategies you need to help you reign with courage, clarity, and confidence so that you too can make the income and impact you deserve. 
Imagine this podcast as your royal invitation to step into your full potential and reign in your divine purpose. Your sovereignty starts here and your reign is now. Hello, my fellow sovereigns. I am so honored to be here with you with Dr. Isabel. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me all the way up, up, up to California. (laughs) Up to California. Dr. Isabel, visiting us from the land of the Kiwis, the New Zealanders. But you can, if you can tell by her accent, she is not as a New Zealander, and just as I was not an Australian. (laughs) Yeah. No, I left um, in 2000 from America and Colorado. It was just time for a change. Do you know, I hit 40 and I was like, I'm not happy with my life. I got to change it. So what is it that that drove you into medicine and into doing what you're doing now? Well, it all started with that game operation. Remember, (laughs) I was five years old and my mom got me the game of operation and I loved operation. And my my uncle, Tio Julito, because I'm Cuban was an anesthesiologist. And when he would come into the room, he would just light it up. You know, those types of people, like when they come into the room, you're like, wow, I want what you got because I love that energy. And so I said to my mom, my mom said that I said this, that I'm going to be a doctor just like my Diolito. And then, you know, you just begin that journey. And I had a whole bunch of you know, self-sabotaging stories that you had to overcome, like I was not smart enough. So let me see, I had to do chemistry 101 in pre-med three times, you know, I would always withdraw just before it was Mm -hmm. the finals because I knew I was going to fail. So I just had to really work on being bold and courageous and just saying, I'm going to do whatever I got to do to become a medical doctor. And so now how has your practice shifted over the years? Well, in 2000, I had, um, I'm a family practice doctor in trained in America. And in 2000, I just remember telling my husband over a winter night, babe, I am really unhappy practicing medicine in America. You know, we don't have a healthcare system. We've got disease management. And that's hard, you know, to, to go, my gosh, what I'm doing isn't working. And then he said, well, what do you want to do? And I go, let's go somewhere else in the world, you know, where, where they've got different medicine. And at the time we used to keep, we used to ski with the Kiwis in Colorado. And I remember skiing with the Kiwis and they would go take us through the powder and stuff. And I go, where are you guys from? Cause I love your accent. And they said, we're from New Zealand. I go, where is that? <laughs> And they said down under. And so I said, one day, this is what happens when you start verbalizing things out of your mouth. One day I'm going to move there. Holy moly. Five years later in 2000, we moved to New Zealand and I'm 40. My husband's 42 and we've got two kids and we just start our new life here in New Zealand. So I want to encourage the listeners that you can change your life at any time. It's just got to be a decision you make. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that I, I I am hearing from this is like just your level of decisiveness, speaking what you wanted into reality, seeing a problem with the system that you were in, and then choosing a different system. And so now you work with your husband, who is a chef, in really yeah. crafting <laughs> solutions for healing rather yes. than just disease management. Yes, exactly. Well, it's so funny because once we moved here to New Zealand in 2000, um, I got exposed to functional medicine. Are you familiar with functional medicine? Well, yes. I love functional medicine. It's like that's the real medicine where you get to the root cause of taking care of things. And it took a while. Like I had to learn all this stuff because it's a totally different way of learning medicine. It's like you have to go back to medical school and get retrained. And so a lot of doctors don't do that. So I got retrained while I was still practicing mainstream medicine. And in 2013, I was moved to stop private practice and and start reaching more people. And so we started Doctor on a Mission to help prevent and reverse disease and give people hope. And now my husband's come on board because he's a a trained chef. He was trained at the California Culinary 
Academy in San Francisco. So he was trained by the European chefs. And he was like, babe, I'm going to help you because people don't know how to eat. They don't even know how to cook. And I was like, yes. So now we're just working together through telemedicine and just helping people. And we do one-on-one -on -one consultations and just work with people. What is the greatest disease that you're seeing coming up now, now that we are exiting from the pandemic? What, what, what are the commonalities of, of issues that you're seeing and the origins of the issues that you're seeing? Anxiety and depression are the number one that, I'm, that we're seeing right now. And uh, there's so much that we can do to help people. You know, that mainstream medicine has no, I, they just don't have a clue mm -hmm. on how to take care of that, which is really sad. I'll just share a little bit about my story as yes, to why, why we've become so passionate about this. So in 2013, I was 53 and we were like excited to start doctor on a mission. I'm a mother, a wife, a medical doctor, and now a brand new entrepreneur. And I'm like, okay, well, I didn't learn how to do this. Just like you didn't learn how to do this online. <laughs> You're kind of like, okay, how do I do this? How do I? And you're just you are going, you are stumbling and fumbling your way, throwing <laughs> spaghetti at a wall. You're doing the best you can, like figuring it out. That's funny. Brendan Bruchard says that. Just throw spaghetti on the wall and see if it sticks. And nothing was sticking. But anyway, a year later, um, I just became really anxious. And when I became anxious, when I become anxious, I don't sleep. And so what happened was I ended up only sleeping two to three hours every night for 17 nights straight. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. And, and by the end of that 17 nights, I look, I tried to take my life twice in those three days. Yes, it was messy and ugly and painful, but by the grace of God, that plan was stopped. And like now, fast forward, I see why that was stopped. You know, like I see the goodness from that. But just at that point, I was like, holy moly, I need help. And my husband took me to the doctor and the doctor said, you're suicidal. You got to see the psychiatrist. Well, I just want to let you know, Kimberly, for a medical doctor to see a psychiatrist is a big deal because yeah. this isn't supposed to happen to us. We're supposed to be and and I mean, given the fact that, you know, through medical school, they are you're so deprived of sleep, like it's a bad, almost used as a badge of honor going through that process. And it's sleep is really not prided. And I remember reading um, oh, the book eludes me at this moment. Uh, Tony, was something. it a doctor? Uh, no, it was the it was based on a study that showed night shift workers oh, yeah. um, that showed the study of just the amount of productivity that uh, that just decreased substantially and the amount of workplace issues, injuries and mental health issues that arise from just the lack of sleep. And it, it really is a is, is a problem. It is a huge problem and uh, it is a badge of honor. I mean, you're grown up in the medical system to be you're like, I only, I only needed 45 minutes of sleep and I'm still doing my 36 hour shift. I mean, I, I hope and pray that that whole system is changing because it's not very helpful for the doctor, but also for the patient. Yeah, I personally would really prefer to have a, a well-rested doctor <laughs> because yeah. I, my father went through a very similar experience to you that, which is not only A, I, I admire your transparency for sharing about your suicidal inclinations and, and what, you know, how that plan was foibled, but you're, you're absolutely right. That's something that people, I'm sure you've experienced judgment from oh. that story as far as like, you're not, you're supposed to be invincible. Like, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and during that, that whole 17 nights, you know, I was listening, you know, we have two voices, the cheerleader and the critic. Well, the inner the critic one, you know, yeah. and I was listening to the inner critic, like, this is not going to work. Doctor on a mission is not going to work. You're not going to help people. You know, this just will not work. So stop it right now. And I was like, totally invested spiritually, emotionally into doing this because I want to help people not be sick because it's so much preventable, you know, it sounds and very much like Napoleon Hill's outwitting the devil. 
yes, the, the entire I love book that of the book. experience of of producing, which is if if you haven't read that book for the listeners, it's the book of Napoleon Hill's journey of writing Thinking Grow Rich and the devil of the inner critic that he had to continuously outwit to con- keep going on this thirty year project that he was that he yes. was doing. And look at how his book has changed the world. And he didn't get paid for any of that stuff. Yeah. Not yeah. now. I mean, not until after the years after. And and I just was overwhelmed with fear. And so, yes, I totally relate to Napoleon Hill. And so, look, here's the deal. So the, the psychiatrist said, Isabel, look, get on medicine. And I totally surrendered. Look, Kim, I wanted I wanted to get better and I wanted to continue being a doctor. I I would do whatever the doctor told me to do. And so I just said, yep, I'll take the medicine. But here's here's the and it really helped me. And I was so glad this happened. He said, Isabel, you're going to need to be on this medicine for the rest of your life. Mm. And I just was like, sure, sure. Whatever you said. But inside, I was like, hmm, we'll see about that, buddy. (laughs) I know you and I have an affinity for proving doctors limiting beliefs wrong. And and look, so my husband and I went on a journey, a five-year journey of figuring this out because you know what? I was that kind of a doctor. I was that kind of a doctor that said, take this medicine for the rest of your life. It's going to help you because that's what I was trained to believe until I had this journey put in front of me. And I was like, I'm going to figure this out. And so that five-year journey helped me figure out what is going on and how we can help change mental health. You know, like I'm on a mission with my husband to change mental health in the medical system to help people understand it's about brain health. It's a, it's bigger than that pill. And so now I'm off the medications safely. I underline safely. I never encourage anybody to just go, I'm off this medicine after listening to Dr. Isabel. No, 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 not on my shift, you know. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm calm and I've got that. I listen to the inner cheerleader. Like I turn up the volume of the inner cheerleader and I take away the microphone from that critic because it is the devil. It really Mm -hmm. is the devil. And look, I'm a Christian. There is a devil. And you know what? The devil doesn't want you to think that there's a devil, but there is a devil. So whoever doesn't believe in that, that's fine. Think of it as the inner critic. But I just say the inner critic so that we all are on the same page. Yeah, the inner critic, the devil, the ego. (laughs) It's it's all that those pieces of that that voice inside of us that wants to keep us small. And Mm. what I found through my coaching practice is when people are on that, have that thing that like, has their heart, soul, they have that physiological response, like this is my mission, this is what I am made for, that is when that voice will show up the loudest. Because because it doesn't want you to win. Yes. And it also, like for, for me, what I had to learn was that it wants to keep us safe in our smallness versus really recognizing our divinely given power to impact so many people. Okay, here you get this. I love that. (laughs) (laughs) I just like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Medicine like does not have a clue really still after all this stuff. So anyway, that's what my husband and I are doing is, okay, you guys listen up. You don't have to be anxious and depressed. And so that's where we're going right now. So with Doctors on a Mission, how how has it been working with your husband? Um, Just to clarify, it's Doctor on a Mission. Oh, sorry. Doctor on a Mission. Yeah, Um, I love it. I love it. Now, he's always been the back end, you know, with the IT, because I'm just I'm just the face, you know, but he's the back end. So he's learned how to be the IT person. He's a maximizer. And now that he's come forward to being the chef, you know, and doing all these crazy reels and being fun and teaching, you know, doing edutainment and just being beautiful as a beautiful chef, we're gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free, and just teaching people that they love it because he makes it fun and delicious. And that's the way food should be fun and delicious and beautiful too. Yeah. And so how has being gluten-free, dairy-free and sugar-free really impacted your mental health? It's decreased inflammation a hundred percent. 
one of the other things that my husband and I have been trained in is by Dr. Dale Bredesen, who wrote the book, The End of Alzheimer's. Have you ever read that book? No, I haven't. Oh, well, he he shows that inflammation is one of the bigger biggest causes of Alzheimer's and being dairy and gluten free really helps decrease. Let's see. I've got here decreases the fire. So whenever oh. anybody says inflammation, think fire, fire, fire. And that's what a lot of chronic disease is. That's what a lot of, inf- of anxiety and depression is, is your brain is on fire. So how, how do we tone down? Like, what are some practical tips aside from maybe going gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free, decreasing those, the stimulants that are just in everything. I mean, my goodness, I came back to America and tried to find hummus that didn't have soy or (laughs) canola oil in it. And it was a challenge at a store. So now my husband's making it on his own, but like, what are some other tips to decrease? Because I know many of my listeners have struggled with variations of anxiety, depression, whether it was clinical or, you know, diagnosed or just their own, you know, uncertainties and anxieties about life in the day to day. The first thing is know that you can be in control of this. It does not have to be in control of you. I think that was the hugest thing. Mm. Number one. And number two is realize that it's a lot of things that can, that cause anxiety and depression. It's not just nutrition. It can also be exercise and sleep, your relationships. It can be toxins. It can be adverse childhood experiences. I mean, you and I both have had to like rewire our brains and say, no, that is not my story. This is my story. And um, yeah, so there's just a lot of other things. And then uh, head trauma, uh, the importance of hormones. Okay, so hormones. The reason I specified my age is because I was 54 when I tried to take my life. I was menopausal. Mm. Medicine does not take that into account. Medicine looks at a woman who's anxious and depressed and gives them an anti-anxiety medication or sometimes an anti-psychotic medication instead of checking the hormones and putting them on body identical hormones. Well, you know what? When I learned how to do that through the Institute of Functional Medicine and learned hormones like have changed my life and other women's life in their 40s and 50s and 60s. And I was like, oh, my gosh, people need to know about this, especially women, because there's so much to talk about. But the point is that two thirds of people with Alzheimer's are women and anxiety and depression increases our risk of Alzheimer's as women twice, two times. That's not being talked about. We're just handing out anti-anxiety medication. And so just like I want women especially women, because I'm, you know, my lane is women, uh, because I get women. And so does my husband, because we got two daughters. (laughs) And all of our animals have been kit girls. So (laughs) my husband totally gets women. We're just like on this lane to help women understand you're in control. You just need a little bit of course correction and somebody to help you guide you so that you can be living clearly and happily, happily until your last breath here on earth. Yeah. And just recognizing, I think your story is such validation and permission and a testimony to brain chemistry and how, you know, having suicidal ideations, and obviously I'm not a mental health expert, but having those experiences sometimes as a result of bio, it was your biochemistry. Yes. That was, that was the, that was really the problem, which was causing this lack of sleep, which, so it was a ripple effect versus, and you were able to look as a functional medicine doctor, look at the root cause of what that is, rather than like, let's treat all these symptoms of maybe the lack of sleep or maybe the depression or maybe the anxiety and instead really treat that root cause of, of the hormonal imbalance. And all the other things. And all the other pieces of it. You know, and your zinc level, your vitamin D levels, your thyroid. I mean, it was your ACE. It was just a bigger picture. And look, I want to say, Kimberly, that was well, that was a good compact of what I just had experienced. Um, I just wanted to say it wasn't, I wasn't anxious and depressed and suicidal because I had a Prozac deficiency. 
I had deficiencies in a lot of different areas that just needed to be lifted and, and cared for. And now I know how to take care of it. And so can other women. And so can the, because you see, if we heal the women, women heal their families. Women heal the families. So let's heal the women because they infect everybody else. When the women benefit, everybody else benefits. And Oh, I would have benefited from you as a doctor when I was 16, <laughs> struggling with all my hormones and that were all a result of hormonal deficiency, bulimia, uh, the PMDD and all the the cycles of all that experience. And also my diet was piss poor back then. It was riddled with sugar and and toxins and things that I just w- would not even think of consuming these days. But the the power of looking at us as holistic beings. And I think that your your story is such a testimony to really how holistic we are. Like we're not just a one size fits all solution. If you were to revolutionize the world of medicine, which you are, you what you are doing, what is what is the, the process that you would want that revolution to go through? Okay. First, nutrition. Food, just like Dr. Mark Hyman, my mentor in functional medicine says, oh. food is medicine. And an add-on to that, which is my husband, Chef Michael, or food is your poison. Yeah. Please, let's get, I mean, if there's a devil, he would have schools, which I know there is, he would have schools feeding kids sugar all day long. So the teachers have to deal with kids that are ADHD because their blood sugars are going up and down. So the kids would have, you know, porridge with orange juice and sugar or toast for breakfast, you know? And so just let's get the nutrition under control. I'm telling you, get the nutrition under control and it will help so much, but there's so much junk food. I cannot tell you how much money goes into promoting and advertising this terrible food. They should go to jail. They should be paying for people's health care. It blows me away. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah. 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 Like the fact that there is a very large fast food chain in the children's hospital of Los Angeles, just I'm like be getting taxed. That is, that is, that is, that is a serious issue with me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, me too. And, and, and it's here, here in New Zealand too. They should be getting taxed heavily to pay for the damage that they're causing. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody has a choice. But you know what? Sugar is very addictive. If you put an, who was it? Dr. Lustig. I love Dr. Lustig. He's a pediatrician in San Francisco. He is like breaking all the rules in medicine and just saying, you know what? We got it wrong and we're, we got to change things. I love the bold and courageousness of mm. doctors like that and people like you. But he said he did a study and you put a rat in a cage mm-hmm. and on one is cocaine lever and the other is a, co- is a sugar level. Guess what? The rat will press the sugar level eight times more than the cocaine. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. So you know what? The food industry has us addicted. You know, yes, we're in control. But you know what? It's also chemicals in your brain. Your brain rules you if you don't get it under control. Yeah. Yeah. And and what we put in our body once we become addicted to foods foods and sugar it's like the, if you don't know and if it's widely accepted that oh that's just fine mm-hmm. um oh that's just how it is like i'm not the biggest fan of the mom wine culture like i do love my glasses of wine me too um, but the whole like i need this to suffice and go through my day is like as this is like the cultural norm that we should accept that we need to be drinking day drinking throughout the day to to be able to be with our children. I'm like, I disagree with that model of the world. And the same- Okay, you get a clap for that one. (laughs) And the same with with sugar, if you don't, but if it's a societally widely accepted thing that, oh, when you go to a restaurant, you have a Coke, and then you don't realize how much you're putting into your body and that it could be detrimental, especially with the myth of the Diet Coke 
or the diet oh, soda. The diet drinks make you fat. It's just wrong. It's just wrong. And it gives you arthritis. So don't do that. Anybody who's listening. <laughs> oh, yeah. I haven't drank a soda in years, but my family, my aunt just died of breast cancer and it was the fastest metastasizing breast cancer that they, the, her doctors had ever seen. She drank at least two to five cans of Diet Coke every single day for the past 15 years. I'm sorry. So, I mean, I've seen it destroy, like not saying that it's Coke, it's, there's other obvious factors, but like holistic, looking at the holistic picture, I love that you'd start your revolution with nutrition. So what would be next in your step-by-step -step system to revolutionize hormones. the medical system? Hormones, hormones in everybody. And you know, mm. when I'm talking hormones, I'm talking about your vitamin D level because vitamin D is a hormone, you know? So I, I know, like- I didn't know that. Oh, well, it's, it's not a vitamin. It's a hormone. But anyway, it's another misnomer. I'd change that too. I would say hormone D. <laughs> and then we also, I, we would check estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA, pregnenolone, thyroid. I mean, insulin levels, like what is your fasting insulin? Those would be hormones is the next big chunk. And do you want to know what my third one would be? Yes. Yes. Brain control, letting people know they're in control of their brain health, giving people the power and the understanding that they're the doctor. I'm just their second opinion. They're the doctor inside of them and they need to doctor themselves. And I'm just their doctor on the outside saying, okay, just do a little bit of this and try this. And exercise is the fourth. Next is relationships. Next is adverse childhood experiences. I mean, look, your future, your present and your future doesn't have time for what happened in the past. Like learn from it, but then let it go. Amen. And, and amen. It, <laughs> amen. <laughs> And it's, it's, it can sound trite of like, oh, let go of these things. And it's, especially if you, you're so used to holding on to that bag. Like I, I always, um, sometimes with my clients who have had severe childhood trauma, I have them make a fist and like really hold it tight. And we hold it to hold it tight and we hold it tight for 30 seconds to a minute. And then finally I say, open your hand as fast as you can. And they open and they're like, ah, and it's, it, the fingers are just aching because they've lost all blood flow. And that's exactly what it feels like when you drop a suitcase that you've been holding on to mm. clutching, when you drop your baggage, it's, it's that initial like, oh my gosh, this is like, it feels so painful. It feels liberating after the first minute, but first you got to get blood flow back to the hand. And that's, that's the pro like the ability to, to let go, to forgive, like having that be a daily practice along with your exercise, along with nutrition and making sure that you go to a functional medicine doctor. I'm such an advocate of functional medicine doctors who really understand the body as a holistic picture. And we're not covered by, ins I mean, here in New Zealand and Australia, we're not covered by insurance. So people have to invest in themselves and realize, you know, what, what kind of a life do you want to have? It's up to you. And unfortunately, people kind of like hit rock bottom before they start saying, ah, I got to do something. So I encourage people to prevent that. Don't fall off the cliff. Yeah, do it. Do it before, not after, because before, like, when you have that rock bottom moment, that that can trigger that so so often what i've seen is that that does trigger that like reactionary almost trauma cycle again mm -hmm. versus being proactive being the visionary leaning into how good can you actually stand it how good can your body actually feel how good can you feel in this palace that we have for for our homes and what can you do because you feel so good you know, how can you show up in your business, your family, your life for yourself, for your friends? You know, life's yeah. not about drinking wine all day long or no. drugging yourself or, ah, uh, and I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want people to think that I'm trivializing adverse childhood experiences because, pff, 
you know, I had to deal my, I had to work with my own junk. I had an alcoholic father who had, and not just briefly, I remember now from the work that I did, I learned how to be afraid. Like, where did I learn how to be afraid? You know, yeah. well, it was when dad brought home a shotgun and showed us it was loaded and in the, in the, in the closet, he was very abusive. He's an alcoholic, abusive alcoholic and um, psychologically. And yeah, he my just dad said, as well. Ah, oh, I was like, ah, you're gross. I don't like you. And I loved my father, but I didn't like his alcoholism, which was covering up his anxiety and depression. But anyway, I remember dad saying one night I didn't, I was, I heard it through the wind, through the doors to my mom saying, if you don't, I'm going to kill the kids first in front of you. I heard that as a nine-year-old. So now, whenever, not now, but in the past, um, in the past, whenever I would feel fear, I would think I'm going to get killed. But there was like nobody around. My dad would die, had been dead, you know, so you had to learn how to go. This, that was my life. And mm -hmm. this is my new life. And like you, I'm so glad I went through that. And I'm so glad I went through what I went through in 2014. Really, Kimberly, it's like, holy moly, thank you. You know, that I know what it's like now to be on the inside as a patient with mental health issues and as a doctor outside looking mm -hmm. in on patients. So I just have so much mercy and love for people. And I'm just, I'm grateful that that happened. I think it's it's such a strong perspective and a testament to to your practice and to who you are and to your mission as far as your transparency, especially about that. Like that is something that so many people have so much shame around if they've ever had suicidal ideations or, you know, traumatic childhood experiences or just, you know, they've just felt off. And I hope that this interview with Dr. Isabel has given you a bit of grace, compassion, and some tools, her revolutionary system to, to go find a functional medicine doctor to support you in, in some of the processes of really looking at these pieces that aren't necessarily examined by traditional allopathic medicine. So Dr. Isabel, what is, I just am curious, if you could change a child's diet, and I ask this for my own personal benefit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What would what would an ideal child's diet look like for you if you could change the school systems and how children eat? Sugar free, gluten free, dairy free. Simple. It's yeah. inflammation and it's keeping the blood sugars nice and stable. We study research. The recent research has shown that dairy and gluten inflames the brain. The brain is growing in children. Yeah. You know, the brain is growing in children. Why do you have it on fire, you guys? And then you send them to the doctor and the doctor says, oh, they've got ADHD. Then you put them on Ritalin. It's like, stop this. Stop this craziness. Yeah. I wanted to say something about medication. There is a place for medicine. Like, I'm grateful that I use the medicine. You yes. Yes. I mean, it helped Absolutely. me get through, but it's not something that you need for the rest of your life. Yeah. And being able to really look at that. And obviously, this is something that talk to your doctors with about. Um, and like Dr. Isabel said, like not on her watch, do not go off your medication. Like just because you listen to this interview, definitely work with a doctor. Um, find a functional medicine doctor, find a doctor who will work with you on looking at what the root causes are and really being able to dive in to that. And like for me, I've been gluten-free and dairy-free for the past almost decade, changed my life, like changed my life, changed my brain chemistry, changed how I, how I feel on a daily basis, sugar-free. I've just gradually decreased sugar over the years. And like, oh my gosh, I can't even like get through half an ice cream if I share one with my son, because that's, that's all, that, that's all that he's getting. <laughs> like, I personally am not the parent who likes to have cracked out children um, on sugar. And so I don't understand why as a parent, you would want to give your child sugar. Uh, <laughs> so I'm like, that's, I don't, I don't like the results. <laughs> so I'm all about cause and effect. But Dr. Isabel, it's been so great to have you on. Are you ready for a little rapid fire? Sure. All right. Who is your favorite female character in a book or a movie and why? Well, I love Joyce Meyer. 
Do you know Joyce Meyer? I don't. Oh, she's she's a pastor, a Christian pastor. I oh, yes, I do. My one of my clients loves her. Yeah, I love her. She's she has grown me up to be, you know, to turn down that inner critic. I, I love her. Awesome. Who yeah. would you be? What woman would you trade places with? Like live in their body, think see how they think, experience their life just for a day. Mel Robbins. Ooh. You are the I, first woman to say that on this podcast. And I am surprised. I love, because I love Mel her. Robbins. I love her. I love her. Just her the way, you know, she gives me encouragement to just be me when I'm in front of a camera or on Instagram live or Facebook. Live, you know, I love it all on all the places. Awesome. Yeah. If you were to have your success at twice the speed, what would you have done differently? I would have started being a functional medicine doctor. I would have. Yeah, I would have started functional medicine in 1995, but you know that that whole that whole school didn't start until 2000 anyway. So, oh. and what is your morning routine? My morning routine is to before I get out of bed, I always say today is going to be the best day of my life. Something good is going to happen to me today and something good is going to happen through me. And then I go make coffee for my husband, organic, of course, organic coffee beans with a little MCT oil and coconut, homemade coconut milk. And then we each go and do, um, we just do our own study. We do some reading. I read the Bible and just get encouragement to press on. Awesome. What is your evening routine to support your morning routine? Um, before I go to bed, uh, turn off the Wi-Fi, <laughs> brush my teeth, uh, get into bed, uh, kiss my husband on the lips, read something positive and just sum up the day and going, wow, this was great. This was great. I learned from this and just say, thank you, God, for being with me. And I'll see you tomorrow. Fabulous. And lastly, oh, two questions. One, what do you define to be your queendom or your kingdom? My queendom, being bold and courageous. And don't let anybody stop you from doing what you're supposed to do. Because you know inside of you. You just know. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You just know I'm supposed to do this. And I know you guys don't get it, but I see where we're going. Yep. And when we get there, you'll see it too. <laughs> Here's to the crazy ones, as Steve Jobs said. <laughs> oh, yeah. And lastly, how do you crown yourself? Being love. Being love instead of judgmental. I don't like that. I like being love in this world because the world needs more love. So Amen. when I when I have my crown of love then i know i'm me the way i'm supposed to be because then I you can didn't also, know how to crown yeah, yourself no I, I needed you to pull that out <laughs> and, and then pull I it out of you a little bit a little <laughs> uh, <laughs> so lastly where can we find you how can we work with you how can we join you oh. the doctor on a mission to revolutionize medicine Thank you. Well, it'll all be in the show notes, but the number one place that I invite everybody, all women is join us on the shame-free anxiety and depression community, private Facebook group. It's free. You get education and guidance. And then if you like what you see, there's more, we can go in deeper, but that's the first place where you get to know and, and see what chef Michael and I do to help you have a better day, a better life. Amazing. Dr. Isabel, thank you so much. As always, my fellow sovereigns, own your throne, mind your business, because your reign is now. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If what you heard resonated with you, be sure to subscribe and start creating a bigger impact now by sharing this with a friend. Just by doing that one simple act of kindness, you are creating a royal ripple to support more people in their sovereignty. And if you're not already following on social media, connect with me everywhere at crownyourself.now for more inspiration. I am so excited to connect with you in the next episode. And in the meantime, go out there and create a body, business, and life that rules. Because today, you crown yourself.